You know, for weeks, we've been collecting your questions and your concerns on Obamacare. And tonight, for the second time, our panel of experts has the answers. Of course, you still have time to send in your question on Facebook. Tweet us, or better yet, give us a call at 1-877-249-9626. Let's get right down to it. Joining me now, Jeff Singer, a surgeon and adjunct scholar at the Cato Institute, Dr. Sridhar Pararatsu, the CEO of Vital Springs Technology, and Nancy Metcalf, a senior editor at Consumer Report. I'm going to start with an email from Gail in Connecticut. She asked this question. If you're unemployed, does unemployment insurance count as income in figuring out what subsidies are available to you under Obamacare? Now, Nancy, this is something you've been thinking a lot about. Does it count? It counts. Dig out your t uh, Form 1040 or download one from the IRS. Everything that's listed there as income counts, and you'll see uh, unemployment insurance on there. All right. And I think, you know, this is a big question for a lot of people, you know, adjusted gross income, what does it con contain? And actually the definition's a little broader uh, than it is for the purposes of the IRS. What else do you have to count as income, Nancy? Well, you, you look at your adjusted gross income on your income tax return, then you have to add back tax fr uh, tax untaxed tax-free interest on foreign bonds, earnings, treasuries. yes, foreign earnings and any social security benefits that you've gotten that haven't been taxed. So very different. You know, we have a phone call right now from Man in California. Man, are you there? Yes. Hi, hi Jerry. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? What's your question? My question is actually more like a concern than a question. That's I'm all right. A self -employed, <laughs> I'm a self-employed individual, and I believe there are probably a lot of people are like folks are like me, and mm -hmm. I make right around seventy thousand a little above. And I went to uh, Covered California, that new Obama uh, deal, and it took me a three or four days just to get through. And finally, I came up with a um, number. They want to charge me over 900 bucks a month for my wife and I. That's like 12000 a year, wow. sticking with me. And I don't need a health insurance. I'm okay. <laughs> well, that's a lot of money. Dr. P., do you think a lot of people are signing on to these exchanges and finding out that the costs are very high? I think some people are going to find that, and some of it depends upon which plan they pick and the kind of plan, if they were used to getting it from their employer, are going to be comparing those plans to. So I think that there's going to be a big variation in this example. You know, I don't know if this gentleman is going after a platinum plan or whether he's going after a bronze plan. Sounds but. like a gold plan, <laughs> a platinum gold plan with, you know, a little extra. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think a lot of people are going to find that in some circumstances it is going to, in fact, be unaffordable. Right. Okay. Well, we have another caller, Stephen in Connecticut. What's your question? Yeah, I've got a, uh, a current, I have an HSA right now, which is a high, dedu high deductible HSA. I've right. got a family of five. I'm 48, and I pay $470 a month. I went on the exchange in Connecticut, and that plan is going to turn out to be a $1,000 plan when it turns into a bronze plan. That's a $600 difference, which wow. means I've got to pay, I've got to make an extra $1,000 a month to get that $600 after taxes. And I'm kind of curious, what is an ACA compliant plan? Because that's the reason I can't keep my current plan. That's and a great question. Dr. Jeff Singer, jump in here. ACA compliant plan. <laughs> what plans qualify under Obamacare? Because this guy's getting kicked off his. Well, there's a basic benefits package that all ACA compliant plans must have. Uh, for example, they, they have to cover maternity benefits, they have to cover uh, birth control pills, um, there can be no caps on, on the payment, of course, no pre-existing conditions, uh, no difference in charges with people in the same age group with pre-existing conditions or not, and there's a maximum out-of-pocket of, of 6350 per individual or 12000 uh, and around 700 for a family. So. Um, but it's important to know, a lot of people think the only way you're going to be able to get insurance is if you go to the exchanges. That's right. If you're, in, if you're in an income bracket that you don't think you're going to be eligible for a subsidy, that is over 400% of the poverty level. Actually, the subsidies drop off steeply, so really over about 300% of the poverty level, you're not going to get much of a subsidy to speak of. Then that's the only reason to go through the exchange, because the only way you can get the subsidy is if you get your insurance through the exchange. However, you can get your insurance outside the exchange. Unfortunately, all the insurances sold have to still meet 
those ACA requirements. But there All are right. many insurance companies that have chosen not to sell insurance through the exchange. For example, in California, United Healthcare, Aetna, and, I, and many others aren't selling insurance through those ex exchanges. Well, I, and, I think you and, make and, a good and, point and, and here. And get it outside the exchange. I think you make we a good point choices. here. A lot of folks are finding that the big insurers that they expected to see on these exchanges are not there. When we come back, we'll have more on what qualifies for one of these insurance plans. You need to know those details. Thanks, Nancy, for coming on with us. Dr. Singer and Podorazzi will be back with us when we come back. Plus, we'll answer more of your questions, including if you can check out Obamacare without giving away your private information. Do they have to know everything? They do. Stay with us. Welcome back to our second special user's guide to Obamacare. We're tackling the tough questions on the Willis Report because, let's face it, the administration is dropping millions of dollars on advertising this law, but they have done very little to help you understand it. So our panel of experts is back. Dr. Jeff Singer from the Cato Institute and Dr. Sridhar Polaratsu of Vital Springs Technologies are back for another round. And welcome Dr. Dimitri Olden, a liver and pancreatic surgeon at Lenox Hill Hospital. Hospital. Uh, I want to start, I want to pick up something from the last block, Dr. P, because we were talking about why might your plan go away if you are on a private plan that you've paid for, and it's possibly because you're not getting the essential health benefits right. from that plan, makes it illegal. What does that mean? Right. So HHS has defined this new classification of essential benefits, which means that you have to be able to get inpatient hospitalization, emergency, maternity, pediatric visits as well as prescription drugs and lab. And within those essential benefits, for an individual, when you buy it within the marketplace, your overall cost sharing can't exceed about $6,300 for an individual and no more than about $12,000 so for a, a family. Lot of, a lot of these exchanges that exist privately, the insurance policies sold there don't meet those requirements, and people are getting cancellations in the mail, and I'm hearing from you when you, when you talk yeah. about that. We, we hear what you're saying. Lots of concern about that. Let's go to an email. Linda in Illinois asks, how do I compare the different policies on the exchanges without putting all my information, such as my Social Security number, at risk? Dr. Jeff Singer, can you take that on? I mean... People are worried about the privacy implications here. Well, she has reason to be worried. People have reason to be worried. Unfortunately, the answer is you can't get the information you need without putting your social security number uh, on the uh, internet and in, into their program. So, uh, and, if, and we've heard many uh, reports in recent days of concerns about the security of the information that's being uh, uploaded by individuals into the, these exchange websites. So uh, you have to be concerned that the information you're putting up in the website, whether it's your social security number or ultimately your income information, your tax returns, all those kinds of uh, vital medical information, you don't know how secure that is. But once it's there, it's there. Wow, Dr. Jeff, that's a good point. Uh, we have another caller, John from Pennsylvania, with a question about going to the emergency room, what's covered. Are you there, John? I am. Go right ahead. Uh, yeah, in the uh, prior to Obamacare, uh, people would go to the emergency room and use it for general health care, and it was my understanding that the uh, the uh, cost for those unpaid visits were picked up by other policy holders. Now, under this new uh, system of Obamacare, it's mandatory to have health care. What happens when those same people uninsured? walk into the emergency room. So uh, wh where's that cost coming from? So this would be people who are not covered, Dr. Dimitri, and continue to go to the emergency room. Will they get coverage? You're a doctor. Would you care for someone who has no coverage at all? Well, I think we are all obligated to take care of these people because we are practicing under Hippocrates' oath. And we can't leave someone in danger, bleeding, dying without care, especially when we have the means to do that. So. One thing is covering emergency procedures, covering emergency care, and providing it. That's, those are two different things. As far as providing the emergency care, I think we will continue to provide that just the same way we do this today. I get up routinely at 3 o'clock in the morning and do emergency surgery whether you have the insurance or not. Right. Right. Well, and, and, and a lot of that's going to continue. Twitter question from Ted Talon. Will the el elderly on Medicare and living in nursing homes still be covered through Medicare? Dr. P, I get this question every single day. People on Medicare are so concerned they're going to lose money, they're going to lose services. So this is an important point, as you've talked about. So people on Medicare essentially will not be affected by Obamacare, but those on Medicare Advantage could potentially expect to pay a little bit more. The premiums could go up. 
Under Obamacare, obviously, that donut hole, the classic donut hole under Obamacare, will be, you know, filled over a period of time. But the greater concern for Medicare patients will be, again, the restriction of the physician networks right. and also the cost of prescription drugs may go up a little bit for some of these within Medicare. Wow. So if you look specifically at those that are relying on Medicare Advantage, they those are, are the clearly told. That, because yeah. remember that there is a tax and part of the cost savings are being derived from getting greater efficiencies amongst how physicians right. take care of individuals. You know, I know a lot of people are concerned about that. It's interesting to hear what you say about Medicare Advantage. We know it's getting less subsidy, less support from the That's federal right. government under Obamacare. And people love that program. They do. All right, guys. Thanks, Dr. Polaratsu. Great job.